Good morning. morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So as Jeremy gave my introduction already, my name is Rebecca Higman. I am honored and excited and not just a little bit anxious about being up in the pulpit today. Uh, My family and I have been worshiping with you all, mostly via Zoom, since the fall of 2020. By way of background, for those of you who don't know, I am an ordained minister of Word and Sacrament in the PCUSA, but generally my Sunday mornings are a little bit more laid back than my fellows in ministry. Uh, Instead of serving a congregation, I serve as a chaplain for Suncoast Hospice here in Pinellas County. So today is especially a treat because I get to speak and share, and chaplaincy is easily 95 to 98% listening. So, yay. (laughs) When Pastor Jen invited me to preach during her sabbatical, she asked me to share what it means to be a stranger in a strange land, how communities can welcome that stranger, how it looks to genuinely show hospitality. So whether it's my Jewish roots stay tuned for more on that, or my appreciation for female representation in scripture, I kept going back to the story of Ruth, the great-grandmother of King David and the ancestor of Joseph, Jesus' adopted earthly father. So for those of you who are feeling a little rusty or maybe have never read the book of Ruth, let me provide a little bit of context about this little book of the Old Testament. The book of Ruth is just four chapters, so I do encourage you actually to go read all of it after (laughs) after worship today. It's just four chapters, and you already heard most of one of them in the reading today. Uh, It is actually a little novella set in the time when judges still oversaw the Israelites. So just a little, just a couple of generations before the Israelites begged God to give them kings instead. It follows the story of Ruth and her mother-in-law, Naomi, Naomi's husband, Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons had gone to live in Moab, where the sons each married Moabite women, Ruth, who you heard, and Orpah. Unfortunately, Elimelech died, and so did both of his sons. And even though Naomi encouraged both of her daughters-in-law to return to their blood relatives, Ruth clung to her and vowed to stay with her. Today's reading then picks up when Naomi and Ruth have arrived in Naomi's hometown. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. (laughs) She and Naomi are the subject of gossip. And they are planning to find Elimelech's relative Boaz, hoping for the absolute bare minimum, which is to glean in the fields. That's not a term that we use a lot nowadays, But what that means is the opportunity for um, aliens or foreigners to pick up grain from the edges of the field and to pick up what has been dropped. It was actually Levitical law that if reapers dropped something in the field, they were not to pick it up. It was to be left for the uh, aliens and widows and orphans among them to gather for themselves. So talk about being a stranger in a strange land. I mean, Ruth enters the town as a woman, a widow, and a foreigner. That's like the triple threat of poor social status. (laughs) But she does strike me as determined, if a little bit naive, and I imagine she was a bit fearful. In my own life's journey, I have arrived determined, naive, (laughs) and not just a little bit terrified to three different town gates of my own. First, when I left my Reformed Jewish background to become a Christian at the age of 20. Second, when I left my decade-long marketing career to follow a call to ministry. And third, when my husband and I divorced after 12 years of marriage and I came out as queer. For those keeping score, that means that I have changed religion, vocation, and sexuality since entering adulthood. So that's my own little like hat trick of personal transformation. (laughs) At each of these pivot points in my life, God led me to leave something familiar and to enter into new community, a new culture, honestly, a new language at each of these places. 
And just like Ruth, if I had not found a soft place to land when I stepped onto foreign soil, I would have found confusion and isolation. Okay, so outside of Christ, I am always wary of lifting up any particular character from scripture as being the perfect model of behavior. But I think if we take a few moments to see how Boaz welcomed Ruth into her new surroundings and her chosen family, as well as consider some of the ways that God has shown up in my own journey, I believe that there are lessons that we as a church can learn and apply. First, I'd like to tell you about my friend Matt. He lived across the hall from me in the dorm when I was a junior in college. We were fast friends. We played video games together. We talked about our shared major of photography. See, I don't like to stick with one thing. (laughs) And occasionally, We even dipped our toes into the water of deeper conversation and reflection. In addition to having a great sense of humor and a sweet disposition, there was a sort of humility and peace that emanated from him. There was something different, but I could never quite put my finger on it. One Sunday, I asked where he had disappeared to, and his friend said, oh, he went to small group. And talk about a different language. I didn't know what that meant. So for those of you who don't know, certain congregations have small groups. They do Bible study. They will have, um, you know, fellowship together and spend time. So I thought, that's interesting. So he goes to worship in the morning and he goes to small group in the afternoon. Long anecdote short, Matt was a Christian who never actually waved a Bible at me. He never beat me over the head with it. And he never apologized to me that I would be damned to hell because of my Jewish background. Yes. That has happened to me. (laughs) Instead, he was a living model of what he believed he had found in God. Safety, grace, mercy. He invited me to go with him to that small group. He invited me to attend, attend worship with him. He suggested books to read when I asked. Like Boaz, who welcomed Ruth to drink from the water that his men had drew, who invited Ruth to dine with him, who asked for God's blessing upon Ruth. My dorm neighbor led with care and with generosity and with prayer. So in order to welcome the stranger then, the first step is to recognize the power of the individual. The way you speak and the offers you make of time and of kindness can make all the difference in the world. The writer of Proverbs, which might even be King Solomon, yet another descendant of Ruth, tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And your voice alone can be a lifeline to someone who is seeking connection. In case you're curious, my friend Matt ultimately followed a call to ministry also. (laughs) So just a couple of years ago in 2020, he finished his Master of Divinity and is serving a church in Massachusetts. So just a little footnote. (laughs) I witnessed from Matt and from Boaz that God can work wonders through the exemplary everyday humanity of a single kind soul. Well, let's fast forward in my own journey about 17 years when I came out as queer on social media in November of 2020. I received a heartwarming smattering of messages on my wall. I thought, I've arrived. I'll be my whole self and my support system will come with me. Thankfully, that was the case with my family. However, After the delivery of a few tchotchkes with rainbows on them from a couple of friends, time quietly marched forward. Straight couples with whom I had spent most of my time didn't invite me over for dinner. Others seemed busier with their own lives than they had before, but that might just be perspective now that I was single instead of married. People I had known from before wanted to ask me questions. They wanted to get it. They wanted to figure me out to put me in a box. It felt a lot lonelier than I had anticipated. Okay, I can't always say this, but thank God for the internet. (laughs) I found a local meetup group of women who got together for paddle boarding and visiting breweries and playing games. To them, what was remarkable about my story was not my label, rather, They respected my willingness to venture out, to try new things, to meet new people. They welcomed me with open arms and curiosity, and not just acceptance, but celebration. 
When I sat with Ruth's story this week, leading up to today's service, I thought about what the reapers on Boaz's field must have thought. I thought about how the men shared their water and left extra sheaves for her to gather. By the way, an ephah of barley, that would equate to between 30 and 50 pounds of grain, which is a month's worth of grain that a man would usually, uh, his, his usual portion. So I'm just imagining one day on her feet gathering all of that. I thought about the young man who was in charge of the reaper, who reported back to Boaz, and how that report was, in my view, overflowing with awe of Ruth. Remember, he said, she has been on her feet from early this morning until now without resting even for a moment. I thought about the women who gathered Ruth into their company to protect her. This established group of people swung open the door for Ruth. Though Jewish law did command that they care for aliens, my experience with humanity tells me that Boaz's group's treatment of Ruth was particularly generous. Now, they did not sit Ruth down and educate her about the customs and ways to integrate into the Israelite community. They were too busy living their lives and earning their keep and reaping the fields. Instead, much like my meetup group, they journeyed alongside the stranger. They broke bread with her. They worked alongside her. They brought her into the everyday activities of life. Her foreignness was not what was remarkable about her, the willingness to journey and to be among them was. So in order to welcome the stranger then, the second step for us is to recognize the power of the group, the protection that it can provide, the respect it can relay, and the acceptance it can demonstrate by sharing in that everyday stuff of life. Now, in addition to considering how to be an upstanding and welcoming individual or group of people, what is the best way to welcome the stranger and to show hospitality? Remember what it was like to be the stranger. Think of those times of your life when you were excited, fearful, vulnerable, worried about rejection by others or even from within yourself. Think about what you needed to hear, or see, or feel. Those words, gestures, moments of overabundance and generosity of spirit that stuck with you. Remember what it felt like the first time you could exhale in relief that you had reached an oasis, a place of refuge and security and familiarity all wrapped up in one. See the face of the someone or the group of someones who went above and beyond what was required to shower you with love and warmth. So I challenge you to remember those comforting words and invitations you received when you were like Ruth and use them to be Boaz for the stranger or the seeker who crosses your path. I challenge you to be generous, to be loving, to be an advocate. Now, preaching is a time of teaching and of reflection on the gift of God's word, written, spoken, and alive. Sometimes the point of a sermon is to challenge the congregation. I even just use that term. It's to to hold up a mirror and show the areas where God is working to polish you up. But on days like today, It is a moment when the word from the Spirit is one of encouragement and of thanksgiving. I am truly blessed to tell you that the congregation who my family and I have encountered since coming here to Good Samaritan Church has done all the things that I lifted up in my message. Every text message, every post-worship Zoom chat, every invitation to serve, every inquiry about my kids or my cats, who you'll often see going across the Zoom screen, (laughs) every small action has shown me that God is at work right here at Good Sam. You are embodying that everyday humanity through intentional one-on-one outreach and things of daily life opportunity. So I say thank you. One tidbit from today's scripture that I left for the end is this. The name Boaz means in him is strength. In him is strength. 
So a moment ago, I invited you to remember your Ruth moments so that you could be Boaz for someone else. And I believe that in each of you is strength for this call to welcome the stranger and welcome them into community. In Jeremy is strength. In Carolyn is strength. In Mary is strength. In Bill is strength. Through the power of Christ at work here, in Good Sam is strength for this beautiful, inclusive, and welcoming work. Amen.
Please be seated. Please pray with me. God of love, use these gifts to make strangers feel welcomed, loved, and at home wherever they are. May they give the weary traveler rest and sustenance, and may they weave together a community of love that is beautiful and magnificent. Put these gifts to the work of healing divisions, reaching out to those on the margins, standing with the oppressed, feeding the hungry, and letting no one feel alone. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And at this time, um, this is where we kind of uh, talk about our joys and concerns. If you have any joys and concerns that you would like to lift up, if you're in the sanctuary, please use the cards that are kind of scattered on some of the seats, and then you can um, give them to me, you can give them, put them in the box, and all those will get to the care team. Um, if you're on Zoom, you're welcome to drop your joys and concerns into the chat box, and those will be collected and then as well given to the care team. Please know that all of these things are prayed over very carefully and well each week. Um, if you need any special attention or help this uh, during the sabbatical time, you're also welcome to call the, the church at uh, 727-544-8558 extension 302 and that's for the care request line you leave them there you're also welcome to uh, reach out to mickey moore or myself if you have immediate need um, both our numbers are in the directory and the passport now i would like to offer uh, or invite our guest preacher uh, uh, <laughs> to come up and share our pastoral prayer I invite you to pray with me. We're going to pray responsively. So I'm going to pray for something and then say, God of grace, and then we can all say, hear our prayer. Okay? Let us pray. For your church in every place, that we may worship and serve you faithfully. God of grace, hear our prayer. For leaders and people in every land, that they may know your way and do your will. God of grace, God of grace, Hear our prayer. For justice throughout the world, especially for your children in Ukraine, that there may be peace and plenty for all. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the earth you have made, that it may flourish in beauty and show your glory. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those who hunger and thirst, that they may be filled with good things. God of grace, hear our prayer. For those who are ill or close to death, that they may know your loving care. God of grace, hear our prayer. For freedom for all, as we commemorate the end of slavery this Juneteenth today, that all peoples in our world have the opportunity to flourish and live freely. God of grace, hear our prayer. For those who grieved loved ones gone too soon because of gun violence, that they would feel comfort from you and hope for change. God of grace, hear our prayer. For Pastor Jen and her family, that they have safe travels, continued restored health, and beautiful memories. God of grace, hear our prayer. Receive all these prayers, O God, in the tenderness of your mighty hand and strengthen our hands to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. <laughs> 